Good morning, America, for our viewers in the West. Donald Trump's former Republican rivals backing him at the RNC. Overnight, two of Donald Trump's fiercest critics on the campaign trail endorsing him for president. Donald Trump has my strong endorsement, period. Nikki Haley and Florida Governor Ron DeSantis on stage as J.D. Vance and Vice President Harris agree to a debate and Vance is set to speak tonight at the RNC. New details on the assassination attempt on Donald Trump, how police believe the shooter got on the roof, and the suspicious devices found in his car and home as questions grow over the security lapse, with video showing the shooter on the roof moments before he opened fire. Milwaukee on edge. He's got a knife. Police shooting and killing a man in the outer perimeter of the RNC. President Biden back on the trail. And I am all in. Trying to unite Democrats around his candidacy. Now what Adam Schiff said about the president and why some House Democrats are calling for a delay when it comes to the plan to nominate Biden in a virtual roll call. First on GMA, NFL Hall of Famer Terrell Davis and his wife live in Times Square telling their story after he was handcuffed and escorted off a United flight. Sand trapped, firefighters frantically dig, racing to save a girl at the beach after a six foot hole collapsed on her. Prime Day taking off. Amazon offering vacation discounts from airfare to car rentals to cruises. And they're not the only ones helping you upgrade your summer. And only 20 shows left. Adele stepping away what the singer said about her future. Plus, Ryan Seacrest with his first spin. My heart's pounding, I'm so excited. Ah, he looks ready for his new role. Live in Times Square, this is Good Morning America. Good Morning America, a lot to get to this morning, including our interview with Terrell Davis and his wife, Tamiko, about how the NFL Hall of Famer was handcuffed, removed from a United Airlines flight after he says he tapped a flight attendant's arm to ask for ice. They're gonna tell their story here first. Yeah, looking forward to your interview, Robin. Also ahead here, the severe weather, at least four reported tornadoes overnight. Ginger, of course, tracking when the extreme heat is going to break, plus the cities in the bullseye for severe storms right now. First, the latest on the Republican convention. The message was one of unity last night as Donald Trump's former rivals, Nikki Haley and Ron DeSantis, addressed the event with former President Trump in attendance. Rachel Scott is on the scene in Milwaukee. Good morning, Rachel. Hey, George, good morning. Well, just months ago, Nikki Haley and Ron DeSantis were locked in a bitter Republican primary battle with former President Donald Trump. Now they're uniting around him and encouraging their supporters to do the same. Overnight, Donald Trump's Republican rivals lining up one by one behind the former president, including former South Carolina Governor Nikki Haley, taking the stage to a mixed reaction of boos and cheers. I'll start by making one thing perfectly clear. Donald Trump has my strong endorsement, period. Haley says it was Trump who called to ask her to speak at the convention. The former president arriving just in time to watch. His campaign keenly aware of her strong support with independents and moderates who could decide this election. And she spoke directly to those voters. You don't have to agree with Trump 100% of the time to vote for him. Take it from me, I haven't always agreed with President Trump. But we agree more often than we disagree. Haley endorsing the man who once mocked her husband's military deployment and even falsely suggested that as the daughter of immigrants, she was not eligible to run for president. She's not tough enough, she's not smart enough, and she wasn't respected enough. Haley herself called Trump a disaster, warning he was unqualified to hold office. He is unhinged. He is more diminished than he, than he was. He's not qualified to be the president of the United States. I feel no need to kiss the ring. I have no fear of Trump's retribution. Now, a different tune. For the sake of our nation, we have to go with Donald Trump. She wasn't the only former rival on that stage. Let's send Donald Trump back to the White House. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis was once seen as the greatest challenge to Trump, but now... Donald Trump has been demonized. He's been sued. He's been prosecuted, and he nearly lost his life. 
We cannot let him down, and we cannot let America down. Republicans praising law enforcement even as they still blast Trump's indictments and focus on crime and immigration. And as Trump works to build support, this week he also reached out to independent candidate Robert Kennedy Jr., asking for his endorsement. A member of Kennedy's team recording video of the call, Kennedy's son posting it on social media. I'd love you to do so, and I think it'll be so good for you and so big for you. And we're going to win. Trump playing into Kennedy's embrace of misinformation about vaccines by repeating inaccurate and debunked information himself. When you see the baby, Bobby, uh, a vaccination that is like 38 different vaccines, and it looks like it's meant for a horse, not a, you know, 10 pound or 20 pound baby. It looks like you're giving, you should be giving a horse this. And you, do you ever see the size of it, right? You know, it's this massive. And then you see the baby all of a sudden starting to change radically. This is not accurate. Babies are not given vaccines in doses equivalent to horses. Pediatric vaccines are the product of high quality studies after decades of research. They have saved countless lives and do not cause babies to all of a sudden start changing radically. The video was taken down and Monday Kennedy releasing the statement. I am mortified that this was posted. I apologize to the president. So back here out on the convention floor, some delegates have been spotted wearing a bandage over their right ear, similar to the one that former President Donald Trump is wearing after his attempted assassination. Tonight, all eyes turn to Senator J.D. Vance, who, of course, is Donald Trump's running mate. Welcoming into this race is Vice President Kamala Harris. Sources tell us the two did have a very brief phone call and said they look forward to facing out on the debate stage. Senator J.D. Vance expected to speak here tonight, George. Okay, Rachel, thanks. Let's bring in our chief Washington correspondent, John Carl. So, John, we just saw the former president willing to question vaccines in order to get Robert Kennedy out of the race and his former rivals with remarkable turnabouts. Yeah, George, and let's face it, there is nothing unusual in American politics about primary rivals coming around to endorse uh, the winner. That's, that's been a staple at national conventions forever. But this is something different. When you look at what those people that spoke last night have said about him, I mean, Ted Cruz said that he is a pathological liar utterly immoral, that virtually every word out of his mouth is a lie. And Nikki Haley, not only did she say the things you heard Rachel Scott uh, describe that, uh, about Trump uh, during the primary, but look at what she said shortly after January 6th. And this is, these are the words that I thought of as she took that stage here. She said just days after the attack on the Capitol, that Trump let us down. We shouldn't have followed him. We shouldn't have listened to him. And we can't ever let that happen again. And that's exactly what happened and it is happening right now at the convention. And John, a bit of that kinder, gentler tone evaporated overnight. Yeah, look, um, you know, there, there, you could say there was a change in tone by Trump standards. Uh, th th this was, uh, you know, not some not American carnage, but this was uh, some very harsh attacks on on Joe Biden, on Kamala Harris. They really went after the vice president here. It, the unity that they've been talking about, the unity last night was a unity of Republicans in support, total support of Donald Trump. Okay, John Carl, thanks very much, Robin. And George, Milwaukee, we know on high alert surrounding the RNC, Chief National Correspondent Matt Gutman is there with details on how police shot and killed a man near the arena. Good morning, Matt. Hey, good morning, Robin. It really has been a city on edge with thousands here for the convention. And now residents are demanding to know why out-of-state police opened fire on a man about a mile from this arena. And authorities now releasing new body camera footage of that shooting just hours after it happened. Overnight, Columbus police releasing this video. Columbus officers patrolling the outer perimeter of the RNC, encountering two men fighting. He's got a knife. They run towards them. Five officers opening fire, killing 43-year-old homeless man Samuel Sharp. Within minutes, the area so close to the RNC, swarming with hundreds of officers and SWAT teams. You can see the mass of police officers, including tactical teams, just on the other side. There were hundreds of officers here, a massive deployment. We're just about a mile away from the convention center. Residents angry out-of-town officers opened fire in their neighborhood. So someone from a whole other state to come and do this to someone here, 
That makes no sense. The attempted assassination of former President Trump Saturday, increasing vigilance at the RNC, where snipers are perched on rooftops, gunboats patrol the rivers, and hundreds of bicycle cops roll through the streets. And as night fell, a vigil for Sharp. Authorities say those officers were operating on the outer perimeter of the RNC. Both the Milwaukee and the Columbus Police Department say they are now investigating. And we understand that some of those Ohio officers have left the area, but anger here remains, and we could see additional protests in the coming days, Robin. We will indeed see what happens there. Okay, Matt, thank you. Now the latest on the investigation into the attempted assassination of Donald Trump and the questions about the security breach. Our chief justice correspondent, Pierre Thomas, is in Washington for us. Good morning to you, Pierre. Robin, good morning. The young killer at the center of this investigation remains an enigma. The FBI is still working to find the reason for the attack. But police have recovered a mountain of evidence showing his fascination with guns and explosives. This morning, new details about the final stage of planning from Thomas Matthew Crooks in the hours before he tried to assassinate former President Trump. Take a look at what happened. Sources telling ABC News that police suspect Crooks got on the roof not by using the five-foot ladder he may have recently purchased, but by climbing on top of an air conditioning unit. And was Crooks on a suicide mission? Sources telling ABC News he left his tactical vest in his vehicle, raising questions about whether he intended to survive the attack. And ABC News discovering new details, suggesting Crooks was meticulous in designing several suspicious devices found in his vehicle and residence. The devices had a remote control aspect, intricate wiring and chemicals, though it remains unclear how effective or dangerous they may be. The real question here is going to be, how did he plan all this to the degree that we think he did? The odd man out here is the, is the explosives. As to what was he going to do with those? This comes amid new questions about security failures that ended up with Trump and three others hit by gunfire. Officials tell ABC News the Secret Service has actually stepped up security around Trump in recent weeks in response to threats from Iran to assassinate him. But despite that, Crooks was able to climb onto a roof and fire at Trump from 400 feet away. <laughs> Officials say there's no indication of a link between the Iran threats and Saturday's attempted assassination. But now growing outrage about the security lapse. Someone's on top of the roof. Look. Video shows Crooks on the roof moments before he opened fire, spotted by bystanders who called police for help. Officer. In our interview, the head of the Secret Service, Kim Cheeto, saying law enforcement officers were stationed inside the same building where Trump's would be assassin climbed onto the roof and opened fire. There was local police in that building. There was local police in the area that were responsible for the outer perimeter of the building. Uh, I'm being told that the shooter. Uh, was actually identified uh, as uh, a potential Threat. person of, of suspicion. And so the local police department actually put a call out. Officers responded, but were not able to stop the gunman in time. The local sheriff defending his team, telling ABC News each department had been given specific assignments and they carried them out. The deputies under my control did their job and went above and beyond after the shooting stopped and the chaos began. In fairness, nobody wanted something like this to happen, and many of the police performed heroically. But the fact remains, we still do not have a clear answer as to why and how that young killer was able to get on that roof and fire away, George. Pierre Thomas, thanks. Bring up the latest now on President Biden. He's on the trail in Nevada, but still facing pressure from Democrats to step aside. Some are now pushing for the option to replace him as the nominee. Chief White House correspondent Mary Bruce is in Las Vegas with the latest. Good morning, Mary. George, good morning. While well, President Biden is hitting the trail hard out here, pledging he is all in on this race. But this morning, a push to formally make Biden the nominee in the coming days has some Democrats saying not so fast. Overnight, President Biden firing up the Democratic Party's base. I'm a lifetime member of the NAACP. And I am all in. <laughs> Glad handing as he reaches out to critical black and Latino voters with polls showing signs their support is slipping. All as he fights to show doubters in his own party he has what it takes to beat Donald Trump. The only thing age brings a little bit of wisdom. 
Biden telling BET overnight that he can't walk away now with the country so divided. I think I've demonstrated that I know how to get things done for the country. There's more to do, and I'm reluctant to walk away from that. Back on the trail for the first time since the attack against Trump, he's urging Americans to cool down the political temperature, but not shying away from drawing a sharp contrast. Now, just because we must lower the temperature and our politics is very to violence, it doesn't mean we should stop telling the truth. Biden fired up, but some in his party still not convinced. Even allies like California Congressman Adam Schiff privately warning donors over the weekend in audio obtained by ABC News that Biden could hurt Democrats' chances. I do not think he is the best person to go into this election. Uh, I think if he is our nominee, I think we lose. And this morning, some Democrats are uneasy with the party's plan to formally nominate Biden in a virtual roll call in the coming days, weeks ahead of the convention in Chicago next month. In a letter obtained by ABC News, some House Democrats calling for a delay, arguing that holding the nominating vote this early would be stifling debate and prematurely shutting down any possible change in the Democratic ticket calling it a terrible idea that could deeply undermine the morale and unity of Democrats at the worst possible time. And this morning, for the first time since he was announced as Trump's running mate, we are hearing from Vice President Kamala Harris about J.D. Vance. In a new video just out, Kamala Harris says Vance is a rubber stamp for Trump and his extreme agenda, saying, Gio, that he will be loyal to Trump, not the country. All right, Mary, thank you so much for that. And we're going to turn now to New Jersey Senator Bob Menendez, found guilty on all counts in his corruption trial. Some Democrats are calling on him to resign as he faces Obviously, prison time. Deeply... Senior investigative correspondent Aaron Katursky joins us now with more on this. Good morning, Aaron. Gio, good morning to you. And those calls from within his own party, Senator Menendez to resign, are only getting louder after he was convicted of taking bribes. Immediately after the verdict, Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer saying it would be in the best interest of his constituents, the Senate, and our country. The jury taking 13 hours over three days to find Menendez guilty as charged on all 16 counts, including bribery, extortion, and being a public official acting as a foreign agent. While serving as chairman of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, Menendez did favors for Egypt and Qatar and assisted several New Jersey businessmen in exchange for gold bars and wads of cash totaling nearly a half million dollars that were found in a safe his jackets, even his shoes. Prosecutors called it shocking levels of corruption. So far, Menendez intends to remain in the Senate and stand for re-election as an independent while he appeals his conviction. Guys, the only way that could change if his colleagues expel him. Guys. That's true. All right. Thanks so much.